If you want to hit little chips like that one and get better with your short game, I've got five things that I want you to do. Let's have a look at number one. Tip number one is all to do with bunker play. What I see a lot of people doing here is doing two things wrong. Number one, where the weight position is. As we stand to our golf ball here, we see that a lot of people think, well, bunker, I need to elevate it over the lift. So, over the lip, sorry. I'm going to actually lean back behind it and then I'm going to try and lift it up. If you want to try and get out of bunkers more frequently, you can't be doing that. On average, the mid to high handicap per golfer finds two and a half bunkers in a round. And if you're not getting out first time, you're gonna be wasting a lot of shots. And one great way to fix that straight away is to make sure that as we address it, if my golf ball's here, I always wanna try and impact about one golf ball behind in the sand round about here. But what I need to try and do now is make sure that the middle of my body is lent in front of that. So I would see that the sternum for me feels like it's just on the inside knee here you can see how much knee flex goes in to this shot here it's not like one of my stood up chips you can see that i've got wider and i've got more over here so make sure we're doing that as our first tip for bunkers secondly i see a lot of people really trying to hit down into the sand almost digging the golf ball out we do want to hit down and we want to go under the sand, but think of it in this manner. You want your golf club to actually just pass underneath the golf ball. The loft of the golf club is going to lift it out. The speed you put on the swing is going to equate to your distance, but we need to make sure that we're not going down. It needs to slide under. So think of one of those chocolate brownies that you get that's about this big, about a five pound note long and about this deep. I want you to try and take a divot that is just like that chocolate brownie. Don't be just trying to dig down, just think about taking that slither of brownie as we go out and if we can get way over and we take some of the brownie, we'll see that we start to get out of the bunkers every time just like that and actually save ourselves shots instead of thinning it into the lip or duffing it just in front. Two simple things I want you to do, make sure you're doing those in the bunker. Tip number two, all to do with the club selection, lob wedge or a mid iron. We have a habit of pulling our most lofted club out when we get around the green. Now, the scenario that I find myself here is one that where the golf ball is actually lying pretty well. And what I will say to caveat all these five tips, always read your lie first, whatever it is, make sure that you're reading your lie. But what we would see is that a lot of people with the shot now that I face, I don't actually have much obstacle in front of me. I basically got a little bit of rough, a little bit of fringe, and then the only real obstacle is uphill and wind and distance. A lot of people will opt to get the lob wedge out because they think that's my chipping club. And if we don't quite catch this one, because of the amount of loft, sometimes we get that one. But if I don't quite catch this one and it doesn't go all the way up, I get that. That was an okay strike where I've actually got halfway now with nearly a half swing. But because it's got so much loft on it, I think amateurs, A, if you are going to use this and you just think, well, this is my chipping club, this is what I use, you need to practice with actual distance control because we underestimate how much speed we need to put into this club to actually get it going forwards. If not, get rid of that one and let's try and play the grain or the ball along the ground a little bit more. If we can get it running like a putt, because if the ball was here, I would imagine a lot of people would opt for a putter. Now, if it's in a position where we can't because the lie's not great and we're not sure how it's gonna react, all I need to do here is get a mediocre strike on it and my golf ball will get running out towards this target. As we see from the other angle, there is some distance between me and the flag. There's probably about 15 to 20 yards. And all I really need to do here is just get this ball about three, four yards onto the green and it's gonna run out to the target. Even if I don't get the best strike, it's still gonna go okay. And it's a lot easier to control than it would be my 60 degree wedge. Pops out, runs past, and it's pin high. And it wasn't my best strike there. 
So try, if you can, where possible, to try and get the ball running a bit more than it is actually flying through the air. Tip number three is all about creativity and having a vision. Because what I see a lot of people doing when they get to the short game shots is sort of, A, reach for that lob edge straight away. They don't assess what lie they have. They don't assess the journey that the ball's gonna go on. They sort of look and say, well, the flag's my end point. I'll aim at that and that will do. We don't wanna be doing that. Real good exercise I get a lot of my students to do is just take the golf ball in hand like so and say, well, we're here now. How are you gonna throw that golf ball next to the flag for me? How are you gonna throw this to tap in length? And a lot of them straight away would look at it and go, oh, well, maybe I'll roll it through the ground. And you think, well, is it gonna get through the rough at that pace? Maybe not. Is there any undulation? Some of them take it and think, well, oh yeah, I can sort of see this and I visualize it straight away because the wind's coming into me, the green's running away from me, so it's gonna be quick. So I'll probably want a little bit more height on this to get it landing soft and then let it actually run out. And what I've done down there, if the wind doesn't blow it too much, I've just popped a towel out, which is probably roughly where I wanna try and land this golf ball because with a little bit of height, if I throw it in and it lands just near it, it's not done too bad there. So even just a little bit flat maybe and a little bit too far, I can see that it's gone six or seven feet by. I probably now know actually after throwing that golf ball, if I've got an okay lie here, I wanna land this somewhere maybe just in front of the towel to let me actually get the shot that I want. So as you get out on the golf course and you may be practicing your chipping a little bit more, just start to pick maybe a three by three foot square, that you wanna try and land each chip in. It doesn't have to be a pinpoint accurate dot. If you can get it somewhere, and that's why the towel's a great example. If you can sort of pick a rough landing area where you think, well, I know how the ball's gonna react when it actually lands there, when it's gonna kick down, kick up, whatever it may be, you're gonna give yourself a clear idea of what you wanna do. So when you actually now get into this shot, I can stand over and think, okay, I know the flight I want this to take, so that would require about that speed. I know that it wants to pop a bit higher, so I'm not gonna actually have it in the back of my stance. I'm gonna play it a bit more neutral to forwards with a lofted club. And I know where I want it to go. Oh, that's how windy it is, folks. But all I'm gonna try and do here is just actually land it somewhere near my towel with a little bit of height and it's not done too well. I've probably played it a little bit too high there, but overall I had a pretty good outcome and a lot of people would be happy with that outcome, all because I've just given myself a little bit of an idea and a vision of what I want to do. So just next time you're out on the chipping green or when you actually are faced with a chip, just think to yourself, how's the ball gonna get to that hole? Where do I need to land it with what flight to make sure it's getting there? Tip number four. You're probably sat here thinking, well, these are all great, these tips, but how do I actually get a consistent contact? A real simple drill that I want you to do, just this is for if you've got some basic chips to help you actually achieve a good contact. Because if you've got an okay lie and it's you know, sat nicely, if it was in deep hay or plugged in a bunker, it's a totally different scenario. But what I see a lot of people, like I say, a little bit with what we saw with the bunker, we get that inconsistent contact where we're getting the ground before, we're maybe topping it. We get that one where we really stub the ground and the ball sort of pops an inch in front of me. And that's because our angle of attack isn't um, correct. It's a little bit too steep. And a lot of that comes from, well, when I'm chipping bad, I get the club really lent forwards. I get the ball almost outside the back of my foot. And I really feel like I hit down. And that's probably a big word we need to eliminate sometimes in our chipping, hitting down on it. I want us to try and feel that we sort of brush or sweep our chips away a little bit more. Yes, we're going to hit down, but only about one degree, two degrees down, which when we think of it is, you know, barely nothing. And a great way to do this is that if we're going to start to sweep our golf ball, uh, our chips away a little bit more, if you get a sleeve of golf balls here, and if your target ball would be this one that I'm about to hit, what I want you to do is just place the sleeve on the outside like so. And what we can do there then is have the middle ball lined up to where our target golf ball is because that's 
a good visualization of how I want this golf club to interact with the ground. I want it to be just coming in and bottoming out round the back somewhere near there and just brushing low at the level of this little sleeve of golf balls. What I don't want to be doing is feeling that the interaction with the ground is if what the uh, sleeve was stood up where it would be down in and up out very aggressively very quickly. We want to feel it's a little bit more low and shallow so just make sure this middle ball or your target ball is lined up with the middle ball and then just in between have a space here where we can actually feel like the middle of the body is lent towards the end of the sleeve now and then from there just have a few practices oh don't hit that golf ball if you can do your best not to of just literally brushing the turf and what you'll notice when I've done this you can just start to see the bruising on the ground here it's not this sharp divot it's literally just the sole of the club just wiping the ground here each time so once you're confident with that you've got your normal chipping set up we've got tips for that on the channel already and you get in this little brushing motion you'll just want to chip one off and what we'll start to feel as long as we've got weight in line with the front and we get this brushing strike we start to see each time we get a nice little crisp chip there and we'll get the desired shot we want so that is a real little hack that you can do just to start to get that strike back if you're really struggling with your chipping tip number five with our putter and it's those testing puts those short puts that we face that really come down to saving a lot of strokes out on the golf course when we look at this one here it's just outside the putter length and if you were playing a match with your mate you'd be can i can I pick this is this good because you don't want to put it but I was given two pieces of advice from tour pros that has really helped me become a better hole or outer as it were number one unless the green is severely undulated from this distance here we don't want to be aiming outside of the hole like I say if it's the severe undulation you have to take that with a pinch of salt but if we can start to aim a little bit more central each time due to how short this putt is it shouldn't really have enough time to move away from the hole if you give it a little bit of pace the second part of this tip is probably the best one that i've been given as well and it's like i said a second ago if you're here and you can i can i pick this up because you're already thinking i don't want to put this it looks a little bit nervy it's that testing distance you've got a lot going on in your mind we know now that we want to aim pretty straight and we want to give it a tiny bit of pace but as we get over just focus solely on the flow of the putter nothing else you've lined up you're good in that sense and then as you actually get in just try and let your mind go blank don't think about anything seems very easy and very rudimental but if we can just let the mind go blank not am i going to hold it am i going to miss it xyz if we can just think right okay a little bit of peace a little bit of calmness and we just pull the trigger all of a sudden we'll start to knock these testing little puts in and actually be a little bit more confident over them because we've not got a million and one thoughts going on in our mind so guys five things that i want you to do to become a good short game player give them a go try them out on the golf course i hope they help and if they do give us a little sub on the channel and we'll see you in your next lesson